Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about how to clinically manage a patient with white out of the lungs. We'll use the principles that we learned in our previous lectures to manage these patients. So you are called to assess this hypoxemic patient on the ventilator. His chest x-ray is shown on the left. These are his vent settings. His peak pressures are 42, plateau pressure is 39, blood pressure is 90 or 60, heart rate 136, O2 sats are 82%. Patient is visibly dyspneic on ventilator with increased work of breathing. His respiratory rate is 38. So let's see how we'll proceed. First thing is don't panic. Remember what you learned in your previous lectures and try to use all those principles. First step as you understand was increasing FiO2 to 100% and I get a quick summary from the nurse. You understand that this is a 66 year old male presenting with cough and fever and respiratory distress. He was admitted with pneumonia and hypoxemic respiratory failure and intubated in the ER. Since this patient is very hypoxemic, you will possibly not get enough time for chart review. As we discussed before, any white out of the lungs involves three big differentials, consolidation, collapse or effusions. And there are five points that you have to look for on the chest x-ray. The first one was looking for air bronchograms. Second was looking at the crowding of the ribs. Third, movement of heart, trachea, or mediastinum, figuring out if there is a meniscus present. And lastly, if the lungs have retained their shape. So on this chest x-ray, there are no air bronchograms visible, so possibly you are dealing with some mucus plugs. Ribs do appear a little crowded when you compare it with the other side, so there may be some evidence of atelectasis. However, there is no pulling or pushing of mediastinum or trachea and it's difficult to assess pleural effusion in this chest x-ray. So either we are dealing with a whopping lobar pneumonia with mucus plugging or possibly a combination of atelectasis and effusion. Given the history, your differential diagnosis is likely pneumonia with mucus plugging with some degree of atelectasis and pleural effusion may be present behind this all white out. So you start to do few things simultaneously. First thing as we talk about was treating underlying cause and your first differential right now is mucus plugging of the left main stem. So ask your respiratory therapist to perform a deep suctioning or perform it yourself. Turning the patient's head towards the right side will increase your chances of getting into left main stem. While you are doing this, get other things ready. Get a bedside ultrasound to rule out pleural effusions and ask your staff to get the bronchoscopy set ready. While you are doing this, you are also focusing on maintaining your oxygen sats 90 to 92%. Since this patient is agitated and working hard to breathe, give him some sedation. This will reduce work of breathing and will also prepare you for bronchoscopy. Since his blood pressure is borderline, anticipate drop in the blood pressure with sedation. So ask pharmacy to send you norepinephrine drip as well. Keeping the right lung down will help improve O2 sat as his right lungs look pretty normal. This will improve the VQ matching to the normal lungs and keep the bad lungs which is the left side in zone 1 physiology. It will certainly run a small risk of secretions migrating to the right side but the sats are pretty low and you need to take care of it first. Increasing PEEP in this case is not going to help. Mucus plugs, pneumonia and pleural effusions, none of these things can be recruited. You also may want to drop your tidal volume for the time being while you fix the underlying problems. Your plateau pressures are 39, so you are possibly overstretching your good lungs and decreasing perfusion to your normal alveoli. Also, you are increasing the chance of pneumothorax on good side. And if this patient does develop a pneumothorax on the right side, this guy is possibly going to code. While you are doing this, you are also anticipating next steps. You know that you can rapidly treat the mucus plugging and pleural effusion, but you cannot really treat the consolidation from pneumonia or distal secretions that quickly that's going to take time. Also, there's a small chance of developing pneumothorax while performing bronchoscopy and because of high plateau pressures. So you go ahead and place a wedge on the left shoulder and give him two milligram of midazolam and 50 of fentanyl. He looks less dysnic. His sats have improved to 90%. However, his blood pressure dipped down to 80 or 50. So we have to start him on a norepinephrine drip and this has helped his blood pressure improve to 110 over 60. Heart rate, however, has increased to 145 and respiratory therapist is able to get some thick secretions out. You performed a quick bedside ultrasound and it shows large pleural effusion. However, effusions don't form very quickly. 
So this is possibly one of the causes for hypoxemia, but not the cause for acute decompensation. You need to get a thoracensis kit ready as well while you are getting ready to get that mucus plug out. So you perform bronchoscopy and lavage. Bronchoscopy showed thick mucus plug on the left main stem, completely occluding it. You suction almost everything out and BAL was performed and sent for cultures. Your postponed chest x-ray has improved. Your SATs have improved to 100% and you are able to drop your FIO2 to 60% and SATs are now 94%. Blood pressure is better, heart rate is better and your nurse is weaning off the norepinephrine drip. You look at the peak and plateau pressures, plateau pressures are now 28. So the acute issue was mucus plugging which is now resolved but he still has purely fusions and pneumonia and since it's a paranemonic fusion, you have to perform a thoracentesis. If the suffusion was from heart failure and possibly transgenerative, you can leave it alone as the patient is stable, as this was possibly not the cause of his decompensation. So you go ahead and perform a left-sided thoracentesis and you got 1600 cc's of slightly turbid looking pleural effusion. SATs have improved to 98%, FIO2 is now at 50%, Blood pressure is good, heart rate is 110, and norepinephrine drip is off. Plateau pressures are now 25, and everybody is happy because patient looks more stable. One of the things that you wonder is, O2 sets did not improve much even after taking out 1.6 liter of effusion. We discussed this in a previous lecture. The way the pleural effusion worsens hypoxemia is because of its weight causing an unfavorable position of the diaphragm, increased intrapural pressure, worsening elastance of the lungs and distortion and atlectasis and decreasing FRC. Studies have found that even after removing 1.7 liters of fluid, your vital capacity only increases by 0.4 liters. This is because most of that volume that is occupied by the pleural effusion is from downward displacement of diaphragm and increased thoracic case volume. Patients start feeling better mostly because of decreased work of breathing and not because their lung volumes have improved. Your hypoxemia should slowly get better as you recruit those collapsed alveoli from effusion, but this is going to take some time. So now our work is done and now you can go back to call room. However, the most important question to ask yourself is, will this happen again? And since the acute issue was mucus plugging and this possibly formed because of his pneumonia, this thing is most likely is going to happen again if you don't perform preventive therapies to prevent further issues like this. And as we discussed in our previous lecture, how to manage secretions. First step is to manage quality and quantity of secretions. For this, you treat the underlying cause. Humidification is important, but usually not an issue on the ventilator. Avoid anticholinergic medications to dry out secretions. For thick mucus, you can use n cysteine, which breaks the disulfide bonds and therefore thins out secretion. You can add bronchodilators to this as it can cause bronchospasms. Next step is to get the secretions from peripheral to central airways in a process called sputum mobilization. And for this, you need three basic principles. Gravity, getting air behind the secretions using collateral channels and oscillations and vibrations. There are four ways to achieve this. Intrapulmonary percussive ventilation combines all three methods. West oscillation and chest percussion use oscillations and gravity alone. You can also increase flow bias to help you get rid of the secretions. Next is to get the secretions which are now in the more central airways to outside and you can either increase the expiratory flow to augment the cough or perform a good suction. You can perform directed suctioning which can be superficial or deep. You can use mechanical insufflation exufflation device and manually assisted cough. Using some flow bias may help you as well. Make sure that you minimize sedation or paralytic because you would need some coughing from the patient during suctioning. Repeated bronchoscopy are usually not very useful, but certainly use it when needed. Adjunctive measures include preventing aspiration, monitoring cuff pressure, using bronchodilation if needed. Keeping expiratory flow higher than the inspiratory flow can help, but this is sometimes difficult to achieve. Make sure that you prevent further injury to the lungs. Use low tidal volumes, keep your plateau pressures less than 30, try to keep driving pressures less than 15, and use optimal PEEP 
to prevent atelic trauma. Now you have looked at all aspects of your patient secretions and you can go back and have some rest. Thank you.